Hi, this is Steve at blessedhopeforever.com. If you followed this channel for any length of time, you've heard me talk a lot about the finished work of Jesus Christ, that we can't add anything to what He did, that His work is finished, that we are complete in Him, that we've been made the very righteousness of God in Christ, We've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies in Christ. We have direct access to God by grace. We are born again from above, uh, not from below, not by any decision that we've made, uh, not by any act on our own. Redemption was totally apart from us, new birth. We are God's children. He begat us. Uh, he doesn't do anything that's imperfect. We have been made the righteousness of, of God in Him. And we have an, a new man which cannot sin. Uh, we have an old man who does nothing but sin. We are to walk in the Spirit, not the flesh. Uh, we are to reckon ourselves dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We've been made joint heirs with Christ. We've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies. Uh, we rest. There is a, a rest for the people of God today. We rest in what He did. He became our kinsman redeemer. He died in our place, a substitutionary death, we, which means we cannot die. We are secure in Him. And I could go on and on and on and on and on about the many blessings that we've received in Christ, all based upon the finished work of Christ. We've been identified with Him in His death, burial, and resurrection. We've been crucified with Him, buried, raised with Him to walk in newness of life, His life. And we've talked a lot about the benefits, the blessings of all of that. Uh, I believe the Lord has laid it on my heart this, this morning to talk about something that is akin to all of that, which I'm, on, I'm going to call it the finished Word of God. Now you may or may not be totally happy or thrilled with, you may not be thrilled to death with what I'm about to say, but it needs said, and uh, I've thought a lot about this video as in the lead up to uh, recording this and publishing it on our YouTube channel. I am determined to try to be as polite and respectful as I can about this delicate subject. And it is a delicate one because there are many Christians today who believe that God has spoken to them in some fashion or another. When we have a complete canon of Scripture, and Scripture tends to invalidate those experiences as being genuinely from God. I don't know how to put it any simpler than that. I want to be very careful here, and I, I do not want to invalidate a person's experiences uh, 
I do question the origin of those experiences. All of the books in the Christian Bible uh, in the Hebrew Scriptures, uh, both Old Testament, uh, New Testament, all together they constitute the complete uh, and divinely inspired Word of God. You've often heard me talk about how precious I believe it is, His Word, that we are blessed to have it. Uh, in the main, I do not believe that Christians spend enough time in it. And that may very well be a result of these experiences that are not genuine when it comes to saying, well, the Lord spoke to me. We need to be very, very careful. Only the books of the canon are considered to be authoritative. The Bible is complete. We refer to that as the completed canon. No more books are being added to it. Not a single jot or tittle. We do know that faith comes through hearing and hearing through the Word of God. This is the, the basis of our of the most important, ask one of the most important, if not the most important aspects of our walk and our relationship with Christ, and that is faith, that we trust Him. I've often stated that I, my belief in the fact that, that what God desires the most from us, more than anything, is that we trust Him. But in order to trust Him, we have to know what He said. And faith comes through hearing, and we are to study to show ourselves approved a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So I want to take some time to point out and, or remind many of you of the, the, uh, the fact that, remind you of the important fact that the canon of Scripture was determined by God, not men. We as Christians do not look at things on a superficial human level. Of course, there were men involved in this, uh, the establishment of the canon of Scripture, but it was determined by God and not men. And making this distinction, I believe, is crucial. It is vitally important that we understand this. Humans, human beings, did not determine that they were inspired. Uh, I think the general misconception is, is that a group of people got together and decided, you know, what was inspired and what was not. Humans didn't determine the Scriptures were inspired, nor that, did they determine that they ought to be a part of the whole, that, that they ought to be a part of the canon. It's what it appears to look like from a human perspective. But that's not the biblical perspective. The reason that any portion of our Bible, any, any text, sacred text. The reason that they were included in the canon, because not everything was, was because God inspired them at the time that they were written. Now, we just discovered or recognized it. The process of discovery started it really began with Jewish scholars and rabbis in the Old Testament. It was finalized by the early Christian church by the end of the 4th century. 
it became canonized as the early church tested and discerned what was truly the, the divinely inspired Word of God. We cannot even talk about this subject without bringing into it the fact of that God is supremely sovereign over the affairs of men, that His will will be accomplished, will be done on earth and in, and in heaven. God's supreme sovereign purpose prevailed over any so-called human error. Uh, the scriptures are not only uh, complete, but they're perfect. Dearly beloved, if a single jot or tittle contradicts any other if one verse contradicts any other verse, if a single jot or tittle contradicts the whole of Scripture in any way, then it is not, it cannot be divinely inspired because God doesn't contradict Himself. Sixty-six books. Sixty-six books. Of the Old and New Testament, if you're a Protestant, uh, you know, Roman Catholics and, and some Eastern uh, Orthodox churches, uh, churches, they accept additional uh, writings uh, known as the Apocrypha, a set of books uh, not considered authoritative or divinely inspired in, in, in Judaism and Protestant Christianity. Folks, we cannot, not only can we not add books, uh, additional books cannot be added to the Bible. Uh, none of the books that currently exist can be removed. God has spoken. What we have, like it or not, and many Christians don't like this, they Lord bless them. They 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 are they're hungry to know and grow in the Lord, and they're willing to to go to any any means to 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 receive communication from God. But folks, there is a danger in going outside of what is written. I'm here to warn you about this. It is a stern warning in Scripture. God has spoken. None of the books that currently exist can be removed. Not a single word can be added. Not a single word can be taken away. I'm of the mind that uh, I have to be that, that uh, so-called new revelation doesn't come from God. It comes from a different source. And this is what makes it so dangerous. We know that our enemy Satan, he masquerades as an angel of light we know this. We were told this. We were warned about this. He's not going to appear in any form, whether it's through you know, some apparition or whether it's through some message, through some other source. He's not going to appear as being off something off the wall. He's going to appear as genuine. Uh, any other religious books that... that that people claim to be the inspired by God should be rejected as what they are, which is demonic. I am absolutely convinced that they are works of devils through humans, not the product of God's Holy Spirit. So I'm going to make the uh, outrageous, uh, bold claim here this morning that there are no apostles, there are no prophets today anywhere on earth or in space who are receiving new messages from God. Nothing new. Nothing new. Nothing. I remind you, the church is gifted with teachers and preachers 
of the word today. But there are no apostles or prophets today who are receiving new messages from God. And the reason for that is very, very simple. God has, in, his, in the very word that we're discussing here, has given us an uh, uh, adequate, ample uh, verses to confirm the fact that nothing new is being added not by way of, of visions or dreams or, or direct messages from God or uh, intuition is a whole other subject. It's, uh, I, I'm going to tell you the Lord led me to do this video, and I believe I have every right to, 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 to suggest that. But that is a far different thing from saying that God gave me a, some special revelation to, to, to pass along to you. There are many problems with that, that, that false concept of, of additional revelation. Uh, the cause, I believe, for belief in, in new re revelation, the reason for that is the, it's the result of, of false teaching uh, to a great extent. That's, it's the result of false teaching. But it's also the result of a serious lack of honest, sincere study. We want new revelation from God because we love Him and uh, we're excited about our walk and our relationship with the Lord and, and all of that sounds so wonderful and it's very enticing and it's, it's, it's almost irresistible to think that we could possibly receive some new revelation from God, but uh, it, it's, it's always amazed me how that those who propagate such uh, an error as this, uh, they don't really, they, they seem so concerned and so interested in what's, what may be new that and while at the same time they're not much interested in what understanding the Word of God that they already have. Sadly, uh, many people are attracted to the idea of dreams and, and visions, and, and they're drawn like a moth to a flame to those who falsely claim that God spoke to me, which might not occur if they actually study the Word of God that God has already given them. I mean, dearly beloved, forget, forget that the Lord spoke to you. If you, if, here's the truth of the matter. If you, you yourself, if you discovered another entire epistle, we're not talking about some short message that you received from the Lord, but an entire epistle, and it was somehow verified as, as Pauline or, or, or some, uh, new, new, uh, chapter in Isaiah or whatever the case, we would not add it to, to the canon of Scripture. The authorities would not, those who uh, are, uh, I guess you'd call them the learned scholars, you know, today, they wouldn't add it. They wouldn't add it to the canon of Scripture. They just wouldn't add it. They're also not going to add the word that you receive. I understand how, how touchy this topic is. Uh, Christians can come up with all kinds of excuses to, re, to, to disagree with everything that I'm saying. But if you take note, notice of, of those objections, what you'll find is, is that they're all based on the idea of, of personal experience. They're not based on fact. They're not based on, on the Word of God. Paul wrote many other letters. He, in fact, he did. He did do this, but most of them were not preserved, showing that it was not God's will for them to be included in the canon. Uh, you'll actually see that in, uh, in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 7, verse 8. You'll see a reference to a, a non uh canon uh, letter 
The truth, folks, is that everything that we believe in the Christian faith has already been delivered or revealed to the saints through the apostles and through the prophets uh, and through the Scriptures. God has given us everything, everything for life and godliness. There, is, there are no specially gifted uh, ministers out there or Christians out there who've received some revelation from God that the rest of the body of Christ was denied or could, could never poss in, in their wildest imaginations could never possibly benefit from. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, According as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him that, that hath called us to glory and virtue. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Folks, did you know that by adding books to the canon, we would essentially be saying that the current Bible is, that we have is incomplete or lacking in some way. And so now you walk around with a Bible it's uh, incomplete. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 6, Add thou not unto his words. Text couldn't be any clearer. Lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Okay? I can quote Proverbs 30, Verse 6, add thou not unto his words, and people will, some people will hear me quote that verse, and it won't make any difference to them. I, Steve, I know the Lord has spoke to me. How do you know that? How do you really know that? I remind you again, Satan, he roams around like, as a lion seeking whom he may devour. He masquerades as an angel of light. If you do not think that you can be deceived, think again. You can be. We all can be. Proverbs 30, verse 6. Add thou not unto his words. Well, if we are going around claiming that God spoke to us and gave us some special revelation, then we are adding unto His words, which the verse says not to do. Lest He reprove thee. Well, now how, how does He do that? How does He reprove thee? How does He reprove you if you're doing that? Well, He reproves, corrects you through His Word. It's, his Word is the only means whereby He does that. And, and you will be found to be a liar. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2 warns us not to add or to take away from God's commands. Do not add to what I command you and do not subtract from it, but keep the commands of the Lord your God that I give you. And everyone, I'm sure, is familiar with uh, the verse at the end. The verses at the end of the uh, uh, several verses, a couple of them at the end of the close of the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 22, 18 through 19. I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues which are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his part from the tree of life and from the holy city which are written in this book. That's a stern warning. Now, can Christians lose their salvation? If you follow this channel at all, you know that that's, that's not what we believe. Uh, God's children are God's children. They can't become uh, orphans or 
you know, again, they can't become anything other than what they are. Uh, eternal security is a major doctrine of Scripture. But the warning is, I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. What book? Well, most Christians would say, well, the context is Revelation, so we must be talking about Revelation and adding things, adding, adding words to Revelation or taking words away from Revelation. Uh, I think that this book is referring to more than just Revelation, the, the book of Revelation, but the revelation of the Word of God. Dearly beloved, you need to accept the fact as hard as it may be. Because we walk by faith, not by sight or feelings. Those can be deceptive. We need to accept the fact that God's already revealed everything that you and everyone else needs to know. Nothing should be added. Nothing ought to be taken away. And nothing should be ignored. A closed canon doesn't mean, does not mean that God has ceased to reveal Himself to people today. No, not at all. He reveals Himself every day, but He does so through His Word. We have everything that we need to know about Christ Jesus, about who we are, about who He is, who we are, how we ought to live, and what will happen in the future. Everything. You hold in your hands, or you have the privilege to hold in your hands everything that you could possibly know, everything God wanted you to know. He didn't, he didn't close the canon. We didn't, he didn't give us a completed canon for Him to open it back up later and give special messages to certain individuals that would be not only beneficial, not only, uh, well, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that he, he didn't do that just to, to give additional revelation that would never, ever officially make it into the canon. So we have everything we need to know about Him. About not just Him, but who we are. How we ought to live. As well as what will happen in the future. If God was appending His Word, dearly beloved, then such new revelation would be available to every child of God, not just a select few. Oh, but Steve, that's what He did in the past. That's true. But... He's not doing that in this age. This is what you have to understand. We are living in an age in which that does not occur. Now, if you're disappointed that you were not born in Old Testament times where God might appear to you and give you uh, some revelation before the canon was complete, if, if that's what you would prefer, I'm going to tell you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, it, that does not even compare to the life that we have in Him today, to where the, we have been given everything that pertains to life and godliness. It's not me that is warning you, folks, about this. Okay, God has already warned us all. Oh, uh, and so what I'm telling you now is not new revelation that I received from God. Well, hi, this is Steve at Blessed Hope Forever. I I've, I've, uh, thank you for joining us uh, this morning. I'm going to talk about some new revelation that I received from God, and that is, uh, uh, and that that revelation is is that uh, we don't receive any new revelation. I'd, Dearly beloved, Hebrews chapter one. Verse 1, it's interesting. I'm, I'm going to say the first two verses of Hebrews. 
I'll read this. This is from the King James, Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 2. God, who at sundry times and in, in divers manners, different ways, and in different ways, in, in past times and different ways, He spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. God, who did that, verse 2, hath in these last days, these last days, well, Steve, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm, I shouldn't interrupt the verse this way, but I have to, I have to stop and I have to say, say, you know, this is what I hear from people. But Steve, Pastor Steve, we're living in the last days and God is spoken, speaking to us in these last days. Because it's the last days, God, God is speaking, you know. Not true. Not according to Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Hath in these last days spoken unto us in His Son, whom He hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also He made the worlds. Hath in these last days spoken unto us. Now if you go to the Greek and you look at that word spoken, it's an aorist tense. It's done. It's done. So I just want to caution everyone. And I guess in closing, I might, it, it, it would probably be a good idea if I uh, addressed, uh, or I said something about those who are uh, allegedly receiving new revelation from God. If, if you believe that you've received some new revelation from God and it is the same in what you what you say that you've received from God is aligns with what Scripture says, then really you haven't received it from God, you've received it from Scripture. And you're just quoting Scripture. Uh, if you claim to have received some special revelation from God and it contradicts one verse of Scripture, you didn't receive it from God. Look, I hope that in some way that you will uh, heed this warning because we grow in grace and knowledge of Him and that's knowledge that we've already been given. Not new knowledge. Uh, we know that through the law, we're dead to the law, that I might live unto God. No new revelation can contradict that. Knowing this, the law is not made for a righteous man, which is who, you, who, who we are. No, no new revelation can contradict that. He was made to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him, which we were. No new revelation can contradict that. We live in the Spirit. We walk in the Spirit. We don't walk in the flesh. So I hope in some way that that someone benefited from this message. If one person benefits from it, then it's, well, it's certainly been worth all my effort. Look, I love you all. I truly do. Rest in Him. Open that dusty Bible once in a while and study that book because... It's the most precious thing that you could ever possess or hold in your hands. Until next time, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.